You just got your new Apple TV 4K and are wondering where to start. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you my top 15 tips and tricks for getting started with the Apple TV so that you can not only save time, but also get the most out of this awesome product. Let's get started. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Languish, and on this channel, I cover all sorts of topics, including productivity, digital organization, and tech videos just like this one. So if you're interested in those kind of topics, make sure you click the like button below and subscribe to the channel to join me on this journey and stay up to date on all the latest content I'll be putting out. But with that out of the way, let's jump into tip number one. Now, Apple recently announced that the new Apple TV 4K supports both ARC and eARC. Now, for those of you who don't know, ARC stands for Audio Return Channel, meaning that through an HDMI cord, you can actually send audio from your television back to the Apple TV. What this allows you to do is you can actually then choose to have all audio that's coming from your television to go out to other HomeKit speakers such as your HomePod. So hypothetically, you could be playing video games and your video game audio could be coming out through your HomePod speakers. Now this is super cool, but it's currently in beta right now and it only supports the larger HomePod. But if you have that ARC or eARC port on your TV and you also have the larger HomePod, then this could be an awesome option. Now you set up your Apple TV and are sitting at the home screen, but you may not like the way the apps are organized. Well, using the remote, you can actually rearrange the apps. When you go over and hover over an app, you hold down the center button on the remote and you'll notice that the apps start to jiggle. And then from there, you can just swipe uh, with the control touchpad to put the app wherever you want it to be. And then just hit the center button again to keep it there. Now, another cool way that you can organize apps is you can actually create folders. And to do this, you're gonna do a similar process as before. You're gonna hold down the center button to uh, make the apps jiggle, but then you're gonna hold the play slash pause button and you'll see a little menu pop up and then you'll have the option to select create folder. Then any other application that you wanna move into that folder, you do a similar thing of holding the center button, holding the play pause, and then you can actually click move into whatever folder you just created. Now, what if you wanna get rid of an app from your home screen altogether? Well, this is easy to do and it's a similar process. You hold down that center button until they jiggle, hold down the play pause button, and then there's an option to delete the app. Now, you may be familiar with swiping up to close out of an application on your iPhone. But what if you wanna do a similar thing with your Apple TV to speed up performance and just help the system uh, run better overall? Well, if you double click the TV icon on your Apple TV remote, it'll pull up a similar thing to the iPhone where it'll show all of your apps. And then on, on any application, you can swipe up and it'll force close out of that application. Alternatively, you can also double click the up button on the remote and it'll do the same thing. It'll close out of the application. Now by default, your Apple TV comes in dark mode, but what if you wanna change that? Well, if you go into settings and then you go to general and then click on appearance, you'll actually have the option to choose between light mode, dark mode, or you can choose automatic where it'll be light mode during the day and dark mode during the night, which is my personal favorite. Now my next tip is to color balance your screen using your iPhone. To do this, you go back into settings, go down to video and audio, and then click on color balance. Now my TV actually didn't require this as I was already uh, color balanced and the Apple TV says you basically didn't need to. But if it does need to be color balanced, you'll be able to click there and then it'll take you through the process of using your iPhone and holding it up to the screen so that you can color balance your screen and get the best picture quality possible. This is a super cool feature that I think a lot of people will really appreciate. Now, the next tip, I'm a little embarrassed as to how long it took me to figure this out, but I have to share it with you guys and hopefully you can uh, save yourself a bunch of time from the pain that I went through. So with the new Apple TV uh, Siri remote, one of the cool new features is it has this circular scroll wheel, kind of a similar to an old iPod. 
And when you're in a video, you can easily swipe your finger around the wheel and then it'll scrub through the video. However, I was trying this over and over again on a video and when I would be on the top half of the circle, it would go forward, but then when I'd get to the bottom half, it would scroll backwards. It just kept going forward and backwards, forward and backwards, and I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. Well, it turns out the solution is super easy. All you have to do is actually just rest your finger on the wheel for like a half second, and you'll see a little circular icon pop up on the stream of the video. Once that icon pops up, then you can scroll to your heart's desire, and it works just as advertised. It's a simple solution, but man, it took me so long to figure that out. And I'm hoping my humiliation can save someone some time out there. Now you'll notice out of the box that when you press the TV button on your new Siri remote, it'll actually take you to the Apple TV app. However, I didn't find this app to be helpful at all. It was suggesting mainly content from just Apple's TV Plus app. And to me, it kind of felt like a waste of a button. But when I was digging through the settings, I found that you can actually reprogram that button to do something else. So if you go into settings, go down to remote and devices and click on TV button, it'll actually switch to an option that'll take you to the home screen from wherever you're at, rather than going to the Apple TV app. Now I know that if you also wanna go back to the home screen, you can just hold the back button on your Apple TV remote, but I figured I wasn't using that button anyway and it's quicker for me to just click it rather than have to hold the back button. Now one thing I like about the Apple TV is that you can create different users on the Apple TV itself. This allows whenever the person is using the Apple TV to get their own personalized uh, TV shows and movies recommended to them, as well as if you have Apple Music, it'll go into their Apple Music profile. Now, if you wanna switch accounts on the Apple TV, you just hold the TV button on the remote and it'll have a little sidebar that pops up. And then from there, it'll have your different profile options and you can easily switch between them. So while the new Siri remote is great, there are times where maybe I don't wanna reach for the remote or maybe I lost the remote and I need another option. Well, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can actually easily turn that into a remote for your Apple TV straight from Control Center. To make sure this is set up properly, you wanna go on your iPhone or iPad into settings, scroll down to Control Center, and then make sure Apple TV remote is checked. Then from any screen on your iPhone or iPad, you can pull down from the top right to open up your control center. And then you click on the Apple TV remote icon. That'll pull up the remote for the Apple TV and then you can very easily control your Apple TV just like normal. Even better, you can actually do this on your Apple Watch as well. If you open up the remote app on the Apple Watch, it'll connect to your Apple TV and you can control it just like with those other options. I gotta admit, that Apple Watch feature, that, that was a real game changer for me as I can just sit back on the couch and just pull out my watch and control the TV. Don't even have to reach for the remote. I sound super lazy, but it's convenient. Now, have you ever wanted to stay up late watching a show or a movie but you didn't want to wake up your spouse with the volume. No, just me? Well, another sweet tip is that if you have a pair of AirPods or Beats headphones that have the Apple H1 chip, you can actually connect those headphones to the Apple TV and have the audio play through them rather than your TV speakers. This is super easy to do. All you have to do is grab your Siri remote and hold that TV button to pull up that side menu again. Then you go down to your audio control options and you can click on your AirPods or for me, my Powerbeats Pro earbuds. Then all of your audio is gonna be sent through those earbuds instead of through your TV speakers. And even better, you can still use your Siri remote just like normal with uh, turning the volume up and down, it'll control the volume to your earbuds rather than to the TV. This is a feature that I've already used several times and it is super useful. Now the Apple TV lets you play games through Apple Arcade and that's great and all, but by default you have to use the Siri remote to play the games and Honestly, that's just not a great option, especially if you're used to playing on a game console. Well, fortunately, if you have a spare Xbox, PlayStation, or other compatible Bluetooth controller around, you can actually pair it to your Apple TV and then play games with that controller. To do this, you head into settings, go to remotes and devices, 
and click on Bluetooth. You can then click on the option how to pair game controllers. This will then take you through step-by-step -step instructions for how to use your gaming controller on your Apple TV and use it for things such as Apple Arcade. Now you may be familiar with picture-in-picture -picture mode when watching a video on your iPhone where you can go back to your home screen and the video that you're watching is a little box in the lower right corner. Well, the Apple TV actually has a similar option. You're able to turn the content you're watching into a little box in the corner of your screen and then go do something else. And I think this is particularly useful if maybe you wanna play a game on Apple Arcade, but you kinda of wanna keep an eye on that, you know, maybe that sporting event that you're watching. To do this, whenever you're watching some content, you swipe up on your Apple TV remote and you'll see a little picture in picture icon. And if you click on that, then it will put the video down in the bottom right corner. Then when you're doing all sorts of other things on your Apple TV, you can just press the TV icon and you'll see some menu options pop up on your little video box. And it gives you options such as changing the corner of the screen that the video's in, as well as making it full screen again or closing out of it. Now my final tip, and it's an essential one for you to know if you have an Apple TV, is how to mirror your iPhone and your MacBook to the Apple TV. Now from your phone, you're gonna swipe down in the top right corner and pull up Control Center again, and then you'll see an option that says Screen Mirroring. And if you click on that and click your Apple TV, then the Apple TV will mirror exactly what's on your iPhone screen. And you can also do this on your MacBook by going up to the Control Center and again clicking on Screen Mirroring. And it will mirror exactly what's on your screen to your television. And I've even found this useful at times for using my screen as a secondary display. I can put things up on the TV as well as work on my laptop. Well, there you have it, guys. That is 15 tips to help you out when you're getting started with your new Apple TV 4K 2021. And if you learned something from this video and want to hear my full review on the Apple TV 4K 2021 when I release it, uh, coming up here in the future, or depending on when you're watching this video, it'll be linked above and you can check that out. But you'll want to make sure to subscribe to the channel to hear when that gets released. And there's two things I ask for you to let me know down in the comments below. First of all, was there a feature that I missed that you love with the Apple TV? I would love to hear what feature really stands out to you and is worth mentioning. And second, are there any other things with the Apple TV that you want me to cover in my full review? I'd love to hear what people are interested in and create content tailored straight to that. But there you have it guys, that's it for today. Until next time.